Hi everyone, welcome to the continuing series of Dr. Daily, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen, where we discuss the different um, components of the Daily Dozen. Today we are talking about herbs and spices. Uh, this is a, a great one that you can just add without really thinking about it throughout the day. Um, so as you can see in the info for today, there's so many, you know, it's really hard to list, you know, ba you know basil, parsley, oregano, uh, cumin, chili powder, turmeric, uh, cinnamon. Those are really the ones that I use the most um, on pretty much a daily basis. But then pretty much all of them count, so herbs and spices. The daily recommendation for this one is different. So the daily recommendation is a quarter teaspoon of turmeric every day or a quarter inch of ground or fresh turmeric root that you can um, grate or put into a smoothie. Um, but turmeric is the daily recommendation and then also adding throughout the day any other herbs and spices that you can think of. Um, so that's the, the recommendation as opposed to really servings of the other ones. It's really just throwing them in whenever you can think of it. So again, herbs and spices, it really all comes down to antioxidants. So and, uh, herbs and spices really are the most uh, uh, antioxidant uh, laden food uh, within our, that we can, within our diet um, that we can eat. So um, when it comes down to antioxidants, really you want to use your senses to pick out healthier foods. Like we've talked about this before. So the brighter the color, the more antioxidants you're going to find in it, the more phytonutrients you're going to find. Uh, so the tomato, tomato that's brighter, brighter red, obviously the red onion versus the, the white onion all have more antioxidants. But it's the same thing, so it's the same thing with herbs. The, the flavors, the smells in the herbs are really the antioxidants. So, for example, there are antioxidants that are called rosmarinic, uh, cuminol, thymol, gingerol. Where do you think these come from, right? So it's really, so you really want to, you can smell the antioxidant powder and, or and taste in these. So for optimum health, you should really should try to eat both colorful and flavorful foods. So why turmeric? So in recent years, I mean, if you did a study, if you did a search, there are literally thousands and thousands, like over 5,000 articles have been published on curmarin. So curcumin. So curcumin is the pigment in turmeric that gives it that bright yellow orange color. So, so just an example of some of these studies have shown that may play a role in preventing or treating a variety of illnesses such as lung disease, brain disease, a variety of cancers including multiple myeloma, colon cancer, and pancreatic cancer. The data on pancreatic cancer is very, very convincing. Um, it's very strong um, for helping uh, prevent and also help um, while you're being treated for pancreatic cancer. Also, it's also been shown to help speed recovery after surgery and because um, it's really, it's very potent anti-inflammatory. So, and also it's effective, studies have shown it's effective to treat rheumatoid arthritis, even better than the leading drug of choice. So there, there are medicinal doses and there are cooking doses. So you wouldn't want to take medicinal doses unless instructed to by your medical provider. Um, there are potential side effects if you take too much. Um, so that's why we recommend a quarter teaspoon. So given its anti-inflammatory effects, it's also very effective in osteoarthritis and other inflammatory conditions such as lupus and inflammatory bowel disease. So in one study of ulcer ulcerative colitis, which is a type of in inflammatory bowel disease, not to be confused with um, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease is an autoimmune condition and it consists of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. But more than 50% in the study of ulcerative colitis, more than 50% of patients achieved remission within just one month of Kermarin compared to those um, on the placebo that none of them on the placebo um, achieved um, remission. So it's very, very powerful, as I said, so you only need a tiny little bit. So how to eat it? I'm sorry, my dog's barking. If you eat it, you want to eat it with freshly ground pepper. Um, 
the liver is meant to metabolize and get rid of things in the body so it will metabolize the um, turmeric so if you eat the freshly ground pepper there's a enzymatic process that it slows down the liver's metabolism so that it can stay in your body um, the turmeric can stay in your body and do its work longer so even the smallest pinch of pepper um, can significantly boost the turmeric levels um, so you also so you want to add pepper to it um, and also with a source of fat can it enhance the bioavailability if you see a lot of um, a lot of Indian or Ayurvedic foods they like to use ghee a ghee as a source of fat uh, that is not the best source. you know it's clarified butter um, avocado um, nuts uh, would all be a source of fat if you were going to eat it with it that could enhance the bioavailability so a quarter east teaspoon as I said of ground equals about a quarter inch uh, fresh root ground um, it's easy to find it looks expensive per pound but it doesn't cost that much to get the quarter inch um, just throw it in a smoothie grind it up um, anything that's gonna be ground up just throw it right in um, so add to whatever you're cooking grate it onto a raw uh, sweet potato so one of our members here suggests putting on a sweet potato um, I've yet to try that but I bet you it's great or throw a slice into a smoothie um, the fresh turmeric actually has a milder taste than the ground um, and another way and so in addition to the pepper in addition to the fat um, another way to consume it that may offer a double benefit is um, consuming with soy so as a double benefit particularly for osteoarthritis sufferers and the most common so to kind of increase the anti-inflammatory um, benefits the most common combo is the scrambled tofu which you've seen me post several times um, so is the scrambled tofu and that gives it the yellow color so it looks like eggs so or you can add if you make a smoothie you can use soy milk and you add turmeric to that so you put the two together uh, do be careful because it can stain it does really stain it stains my counter I get it on my counter a lot um, but if you use a bleach it will come off um, so be careful who should not take turmeric so turmeric actually has a potent it contracts the gallbladder which is good so that the bile in the gallbladder doesn't get stagnant doesn't sit there so and that's when you get stones so it's a good way to prevent gallstones but if you already have gallstones it could be if it causes the gallbladder to contract it can be painful so you would want to if you have gallstones you might want to avoid it so and then all the other herbs and spices there are so many benefits I mean there's so many different types and they're really specific to each one so you want to try to get a variety but some things so cinnamon is well known to help modulate blood sugars um, you can actually fake a blood sugar test if you take a different significant amount of cinnamon about 12 hours before you take it it will lower your blood sugar so it will not that I want you to fake your test um, but it's really it does help modulate blood sugars um, amla, uh, which is powered, powdered dried gooseberry fruit, um, it's the single most antioxidant packed spice on earth, though it is, um, it's becoming much more popular in the United States. Um, oregano and marjoram, which are similar um, in their, their formulas, they have antibacterial, um, anti-cancer, and anti-inflammatory properties. I actually have an oregano essential oil that if I cut myself and I think something is getting infected, I put um, a little bit of oregano oil on it. It heals it right up. Um, peppermint is the most antioxidant-packed common herb. So there's herbs and spices, right? So a little different. Ginger um, is well known the data as well. Um, I have I've often suggested it to my patients for its anti-nausea benefits. Um, it also helps with migraine frequency and duration. Uh, cayenne pepper has been shown to help with cluster headaches, um, irritable bowel syndrome, and actually dyspepsia, which is which is essentially reflux. Um, cilantro, which I know is is some people love it and some people hate it. Um, it reduces inflammation and can cut uric acid levels in half. So if people have gout, uh, it can be helpful for that. So just a little smattering of the benefits of all the different herbs and spices. So try to add them to whatever you're thinking. If you're having oatmeal in the morning, I sprinkle some cinnamon on that. 
for my lunch I always have I have fresh parsley right now my garden is going crazy or I have dried oregano I always have that available even some pepper um, and then in my dinner I usually have things such as I, this where usually where my turmeric shows up or chili pepper cumin those are ones that I use a lot so um, if you have your favorite ways to use your spices or to, uh, particularly to use turmeric uh, please do feel free to um, drop it in the comments, ask any questions about anything in particular, uh, share your recipes, and tomorrow we'll be going over whole grains. See you then.